All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 15th day of November, 2018. Well, numerologically, we have a six today. 15 reduces to six. And uh, six always, for me, has to do with higher self energies and balance and harmony but also protection and healing and idealism. And since it's a Thursday, you know, we're looking at Jupiter as an influence and Jupiter is very expansive and about, about abundance and all of that. So kind of aligns a little bit with uh, a six day as well. Being expansive. I think that, uh, I've seen correspondences for Jupiter be be both uh, fire and, and, and air. I sort of look at it more as an air planet, maybe, uh, given the expansiveness, although expansiveness would indicate fire maybe as well. So I don't know. I see why people think it's either or both or whatever. But today, you know, on a Thursday, it's always a nice day to... Uh, Smudge your home with some either some sage or some cedar to try to remove negative energies and allow for positive ones to replace them and expand and grow and replace everything that's uh, not so comfortable. So sometimes that's a nice thing to do on a Thursday. It's just to smudge if you have something to smudge with. We're lucky living on the high desert, you know, whether I have I have some white sage. Actually, I, I grew some white sage from seed this year, and it's beautiful. And it's the first time I've ever gotten it to, to live through the season. I don't know why it's such a sensitive plant, but it is. But we have, uh, you know, wild sage here growing, and so I can always just go out and grab some and make a quick smudge if I have to. So, so we're kind of lucky that way. To have the different desert sages and stuff growing around here, it's nice. Well, let's count 13 and see what we have on this uh, higher self day. Well, we haven't seen this one, I don't think, in a while. So this is the Three of Swords. Now, I'm going to come over here, I guess. I think we decided yesterday this worked better. Depends on the candles I have lit. <laughs> but here we see three swords piercing a heart. We see rain in the background and clouds. And the simplicity of this, it's about betrayal. I mean, maybe you've got, um, it's always, you know, when you have a, a threesome, when you have uh, three friends together, it's always a, a, a potential for two pairing off against the other one. I remember there were, there were these three girls in, in grade school. I was, I was in the sixth grade with them. We had just moved to Oregon from Alaska. It was my first school that I was at. And I remember these three girls and inevitably two would be mad at the other one. And that would be at the time they would just randomly pick someone else to be the third. And one time I got to be the third. And it wasn't a very comfortable thing. It's like, come on, let's go out. You come and have lunch with us. I'm like, well, where's so-and-so? Well, we're mad at her today. So you come and you eat with us. I'm like, okay. You know, I was new. What did I know? But it wasn't comfortable, you know, to be in that weird, let's be mad at the other girl energy. Because she was, I mean, all three girls were really nice girls. It, it, I don't know why they like to play those kind of games. But that's what they did. But every time I see this, I, I think of those three girls. The three is a, is a catalytic number. You know, it's a, a, a multiple, a, a six is a multiple of three. So in a sense, you know, you're getting uh, energy that is uh, uh, catalytic in nature. And uh, uh, it's about triplicity and, and integration of mind, body and spirit. And, you know, that that's kind of the positive part of it. But uh, here, of course, we have a little different thing going on. Swords is about reason and intellect. And when you have the three of swords, 
basically what it's telling us, a lot of the time with most swords uh, uh, cards, you're looking at allowing the process and to get out of the way of your own thoughts. Um, here we have the drama triangle. You know, they could have just as easily uh, uh, represented it, I suppose, as, as again, mind, body, and spirit in alignment. But, uh, but basically what we're trying to do here is balance things, okay, in a way that, that makes a little more sense and is a way that's not piercing the heart of things. You know, um, although there's potential for transformation in this card, you know, ideally, what we're asking us to do is to look at past, present, and future within a given situation. How did we get here? Where are we are now? Where are we now? And where are we going in the future? Particularly when it's emotional and when perhaps, you know, we've been hurt somehow. And so basically we're looking at synthesis here. We're looking at a way to try to synthesize what happened in a way that allows us then to move on and not, you know, be as stuck as what, what this appears to be, so. But in a sense, what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance head and heart, and we're not doing a very good job of it in this card. Let's see, yesterday we drew a second card because we wanted to kind of get to where it was the, I believe it was the, was it the five of, yeah, it was the five of swords. And so there again, we had some, some things happening that we weren't really sure about. And I think ultimately given the second card that I drew, which was the four of pentacles, uh, I sort of ended up with a different viewpoint of the guy in the front part of the, of the card that's cleaning up, that's picking up the swords while the other two stand there with their back to the situation all the way up. Um, but without knowing, you know, a little bit of background or getting another card to sort of give us a direction of, of either where this came from or where it was going, you know, it was sort of hard to know, you know, who's really, you know, what's really going on here. Is the guy in front taking things from these other people or are it, did they just, he just won the argument, you know, he, he was the victor and to the victor goes the spoils. I don't know. So between that and then we, and then I drew Rado, which was the rune, and I really think that it's just about the process. You know, we um, clearly have had a situation where one side won over the other. And uh, now it's just time to realize that maybe we put ourselves there by being uh, miserly or thinking only about ourselves. And now we've lost whatever power we had or control we thought we had. But that was because we, we didn't approach it correctly. We did it in a way that was self-serving. And so, you know, the journey, so then the inner journey that we take is one toward understanding that, you know, you can't actually behave that way. But you see, that's what happens when you can draw another card. You can get a little bit more of a, of a, of a storyline here of what's really going on. So let's do that again and just see what happened here. Well, this is the six of pentacles, and I really think that it demonstrates the uh, balance and the generosity uh, that Jupiter gives us. Let's see, let me come over here, don't I? And here we have a man who's got some wealth. He's holding some scales, a, a set of scales in the other hand. So he understands he has what he needs and he's and he's being generous to those in need. That ability to think about somebody other than yourself. Uh, the four of pentacles yesterday, the king in that card sure had a difficult time, didn't he? Thinking about uh, someone other than himself. And uh, here we have though, an example of balance. And of being able to see that you don't lose that balance by giving to other people, by expressing benevolence and generosity and, and sharing the abundance with others. You know, that's what, when you have a country as big as ours, um, the tax money that we, that we give the government, you know, uh, basically is to help elevate our society and to pay for things we need done, repairs, whatnot, education, 
whatever it is, but it's to elevate society. And the, uh, being a sixth day and also a Thursday uh, and, and the influence of Jupiter and expansion and abundance and prosperity and all of that, you know, you're really seeing that this card is aligning with, with all of that, I think. So once again, um, we had a situation maybe where this was taking place uh, and then all of a sudden, we had some betrayal, maybe, and uh, the balance was basically lost. And uh, instead of instead of going forward in that generous and expansive way, you know, instead what we've done is we've done this. So either. This was what was before, and then this was the conflict. Let's do a third card and see if we can get some other information that way. Because I'm not sure that we can look at this in terms of before and after. Because you're looking at the difference here between betrayal and generosity or a drama angle, the, the trying to figure out, you know, reason versus emotion, head versus heart. Clearly, the guy in the Six of, of Pentacles has already resolved that issue and understands that part of his own, his own benevolence, his own expansion is dependent on what he can give to others. It's not just simply about what he gains for himself. He's not caught up in this. Four, five, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, again, here we have the Ten of Pentacles. Same sort of scene of abundance, isn't it? You've got the older man there, you've got some dogs. There should be some kids there too. Yep, there's some, uh, nope, not in, oh yeah, there, there, there it is. I see her. And mom and dad are there. It looks like they've come to visit grandpa or something. And you can see the, the, the benevolence there. You have the wealth, you have the legacy. You have the doorway, the archway into the future. But somehow or another, all that got betrayed. Okay. Somehow we lost sight. Of this wonderful benevolence. And this wonderful harmony. Ten and six is seventeen, so or sixteen rather, and so ten and six is sixteen, and so six and one is seven. There's the seven. And you see that here with the scales, don't you? But here you have the you hear what you have is the tree of life, don't you? Look at the uh, I'll pull this back. Maybe I'll go over here. There, you see how the you see how the pentac you see how the pentagrams are or the pentacles are arranged. That's the tree of life. That's the kabbalistic tree of life, isn't it? Very similar to. This is our structure. Okay, this is our structure in form. Well, I dropped the other card somewhere and I don't know what I've done with it. There it is. This is our real structure into form, is that tree of life, how, what that symbolizes, all of the, the different um, uh, realities that we go through, um, the energies that, bring, that come into form, the energies that comprise form down into the lowest kingdom, as above, so below. 
But then it all shattered apart, didn't it? So, see, that was not the card. There it is. There it is. I guess I had dropped another one. That's really interesting. Usually, I usually, I guess we had all of that. I guess we, I guess what I'm trying to say here. I think that what this is really showing is that, is that we have a foundation that is full of abundance and joy and harmony and benevolence toward others. And then something happened. So let's see if the rune can, can uh, and we had a betrayal. It's almost like someone is trying to appeal to the lesser nature of people and trying to do it in a way to gain control and to change all of this foundation and structure to something else, a little more nefarious. That's what this feels like to me. So I was kind of having a hard time trying to organize that thinking in my head to try to say all that, but, but yeah, that's what this feels like. Because when you look at the numerology of the two cards, the two pentacle cards, you're looking at seven, which could be change and transformation. So something changed and it went into a form of betrayal where we're asked to, where we're asked to believe things that aren't true. That's what this is. We're asked to believe things are, that are not true and our structure is being affected by that and our foundation is being affected. Okay, so, all right. So we have Tiwas, which is the warrior within. Okay, this is about right order. It's about justice. It's about fairness. It's about protection. It is the 17th rune of the Elder Futh arc. So it is an eight energy. And eight is again about strength and harmony. So what it tells us is to stand up and speak truth to power, doesn't it? It tells us to stand up and to say no, that, that we're going to proceed in a way that's, that's about justice and the rule of law and fairness, that we're not going to stand for betrayal, that our foundation is far too important than to do something like that, so we aren't going to do that. We're going to take a look around and we're going to stand up for what's right irrespective if it means that we have to turn our backs on whoever it is that brought us to this point, okay? It's easy to take the low road, isn't it? It shouldn't be, but oftentimes it is. We look at people that we not necessarily put on a pedestal, but, but maybe think more of. We forget that we're all just human, I guess, and, and that we're all capable of serving a lower purpose instead of a higher one. But it just seems like, you know, these days we're, we're witnessing a lot of that service to self mindset. Uh, service to self mindset creates things like this. You know, service to others creates, creates this. Well, let me get this thing back up here. There we go. So I can see what I'm doing. Service to others. Let me put this down. Service to others creates this mindset. One where you are capable of being generous. One where you're capable of coming together with people for the greater good, you know, to leave a legacy. You know, are we going to leave a legacy of betrayal and lies and, and deception? of drama and all of that, or are we going to stand up for something? You know, the thing about this country, um, our constitution is filled with amazing ideals, amazing higher principles, you know, um, and it's, it's really kind of a, a good conversation to have on this Thursday, this day of expansion, um, this Jupiter influence. 
Uh, but we've kind of gotten lost. We've lost the united part of the United States. And instead, we've been expressing this level of polarity that is flinging us apart, literally flinging us apart. And instead of united, we're divided. We've lost sight of this, okay, in favor of this. And the spiritual warrior within is just crying out to be heard, to stand up for what you know to be right, to not express racist attitudes, to not even not even think them to not not believe you know that someone uh, of a different color is somehow less than to believe that one gender is more valuable than the other to ever believe anything is more valuable other than perhaps our unity that's certainly more valuable than something like this you know, I, I love the energy and the fluid motion of Tiwaz. I mean, just look at it for a moment. It shows a focus on spirit. It shows a focus on, it, it's a mighty rune. It has a sense of mightiness to it, of standing up, making sure that our unity, our greater unified presence is what is supported and maintained, not this. This is betrayal. This is telling us that we're being betrayed. And what these two cards are telling us is that we have this wonderful, wonderful foundation. Oh, somehow I, I, that Cortana thing or whatever it is came up. So how can I help you? Well, you know, you can stop having this happen. That's how you help us today. I don't like those whole Siri and stuff. I don't like that kind of stuff. I think it's weird. And, and, and what is this Alexa thing? You know, didn't it, didn't it like order Sarah Sanders's daughter something from Amazon or something? I, I don't even know. That was weird. <laughs> kind of funny, but scary when you think about it, that a, a little child, a toddler can order something from just saying, Hey, Amazon, I want this or whatever. It's or Alexa, I want this. Yeah, isn't that strange? We've come that far, and my God, where is it? <laughs> where is it we're going? I don't even know. We don't have things like that in this house. So, anyhow, <laughs> but think about it for a moment. Think about the spiritual warrior within and standing up for what's actually right. Um, when we don't know what's going on around us, when the government doesn't tell us the truth, when there's all this chaos going on when there's betrayal happening in our lives. Sometimes all we can do is come inward and stand up for what we know to be true. And that's all we're talking about today with Tiwas is stand up and stand up against betrayal and lies and deception so that we can get back to this. So. Anyway, something to think about on this day of expansion, this Thursday, this Jupiter day. Let's see if there was on my notes here, if there's anything else I forgot to say here. No, I talked about smudging. But we have one other thing I wanted to say. A lot of the cards these days have been pentacles. And that tells me that that we're really dealing these days with foundational issues in our lives, whether it's, you know, in our own personal lives or whether it's societally, um, we're, we're taking a look at who we are and what we believe and how we want to proceed in the future. You know, are we going to do it in a way that preserves the unity or are we going to do it in a way that just lets it all fall apart? Um, I think that at least from a tarot perspective, you know, you look at the way that the uh, different artists in these different decks have depicted pentacles, and it really does show you that if you get out and you really look around at the connectedness of things, it's really all that we have. And if we allow that to 
fall into disrepair. You know, we have a neighbor that um, simply can't get it together. They have children, they, their, their yard, everything. They even put a fence up to conceal the mess. But it's a level of chaos that isn't healthy, literally not healthy. There's garbage there. You walk by it when it's really super warm out and you smell it. And there are children living there. And it's a, it's a thing where obviously these are nice people. They're decent people. They're not, you know, they're not out there committing crimes or anything. They're just raising their kids. But they don't have any money. They don't have enough to survive. Not in a way that, that you know, that is, that, 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 that is useful to them, okay? There's not a lot of abundance. There's a lot of nonsense going on there because they are so caught up in the lack that they can't do anything else. You know, they simply can't. They can't bring themselves to bring order back into their lives. They've allowed the chaos and, and quite probably the depression of things to overtake, and they're just unable to get there. <clears throat> and it's sad because they're very nice people. And if they just could find a way to at least clear out the clutter of it all, you know, then maybe they could find a way to begin but they can't even get there. It's become that difficult of a life for them. So the point is, is that in a society, there ought to be a way to help somebody like this reorder their thought processes and get them going in a direction to where they're not so bereft and they're not so depressed and they can't function to even clean up, to even throw something away. You know, because here's the thing, they don't have the money for garbage service. And if they don't have the money for that, they don't have money to then drive the truck that's filled with garbage to go to the dump, right? And get rid of it that way. They can't even do that. They just have to hide it. And I don't know how, because there's a whole lot of people in this country that live this way. And I don't know how we can be okay with that. I don't know how the benevolence and the wealth that exists in this country would allow for such a thing, would allow for anyone to have to experience something like that in their lives and have it be okay with people to just drive right on by and do nothing. So I think that we're looking at foundational issues now you know, the election in 2016 has really been a catalyst for that, I think. To have somebody in that position with zero empathy, to have no ability to extend himself in love and compassion to anyone else. We end up with this. And now we have to figure it out. And I really think that what I'm seeing, the synchronicity between all of these readings that we're doing, between, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's the numerology for the day or if it's the tarot cards or the runes, what it all seems to be dovetailing to is who are we? What is our foundation? What is going to work for us? And do we want to be in an endless mode of betrayal? Or do we want to stand up to this? You know, express the Tiwas, express the spiritual warrior within, express Tiwas energies and say, this is not going to work here that we need a better way. We need a return to what made us who we are in this country. So if we want to be that, if we want to be that, then we need a return to this foundation that we so carefully built together all of this time that seems to be so threatened these days. So anyhow, something to think about. I actually have... a quite a bit of the, the blog post I've been talking about that I've been doing. Most of it is, is, is pretty fleshed out. Uh, I wrote some other things and I need to bring them over to this computer back here and put them on that one. Um, just jotting some things down last night. Uh, so that ought to be hopefully done today and up on the blog, if not, probably tomorrow. Uh, so anyhow, go check that out if you like at stepping aside at I'm stepping aside.com. Um, it has all kinds of things. It's basically a witch blog, but it has, you know, a, a herbal materia medica on it. Um, it has 
some stuff on cannabis. It has a grimoire, some stuff on being an empath, some Reiki stuff, just all kinds of things. I post the, 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 the video over there. And so anyhow, um, just think about it. Think about what your foundation is and think about if you're experiencing betrayal in your life and how that affects all of that. And think about ways to stand up and, and just bring your own integrity into the, into the conversation and into the mix and into your response. And just say, you know what? Um, I don't want to participate in the drama. I don't want that affecting my life anymore. I want us to go back to something that's more harmonious and more even and that elevates and transforms into something positive. So anyway, think about that. And uh, today is Thursday, I guess. So I will see you all on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Be good to yourself and good to others and blessed be.